Have you got a Sonix Aurora, or are you thinking of getting one, but want to know how to set it up for Airsoft? If so, then you've come to the right place. This is AATV, and I'm your host, Tom Anvil Hibbard. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to set up your Sarnix Aurora. First, we'll go over mounting it, the hardware you'll need to make the most of it, then we'll go on to the settings that optimise the night vision camera for our uses. Here is my helmet setup. This is an FMA fast helmet with an upgraded shroud, comfort pads and suspension straps. I also have an IR illuminator mounted to the side. We'll go over that later. The Sonix camera itself is attached to this prototype Lions Gear Solutions Matros bridge that I've been testing. They've now released the production version. This incorporates feedback from myself and some others. I'll show you photos of the production variant when details differ from this prototype. This bridge allows you to mount one or two units and there will be adapters available for PVS-14 and Fleur Mini Rail 2. You can see some of the prototype mounts here. I've currently got one Aurora mounted so I've taken one of the arms off to save just a bit of weight. You can adjust how far the unit is out from the center to suit your eyes. This is known as pupillary distance. Everyone is different and you can set each side independently as well. Once you have the pupillary distance set, you can then lock it off using these thumb screws. You can also flip the unit out of the way using these hinges. This is very handy when going through areas of varying light and also when you want to minimize your profile in tight areas. The tension on the hinge is adjustable. The dovetail is attached by this section. There are three shipped with the bridge, giving you some options on how far the match will sit away from your face. The camera is attached by these thumb screws that attach to the tripod mount on the base of the Psyonix. If you have two Psyonixes mounted, you can vary the angle of each one to give you a wider field of view. If you don't need the flip up feature, there's also another bridge called the Fast. This also features side independent adjustable pupillary distance. In this case, it's via these large thumb dials on the ends. My Sonix also has this Aspis lens protector on the front and this top hat adapter on the back, which can take a PVS-14 style rubber eye cup to reduce your light signature. Head over to Lions Gear Solutions to get yours. If you're running the camera as a monocule, there is a decision to be made about which eye to position it over. This really is a matter of preference and you'd be wise to try each one before making the decision. For passive use, when you're looking through a night vision compatible red dot optic, you'll need to put it over your dominant shooting eye. However, if you intend to use IR lasers to aim, then you can use the non-dominant eye, giving you some options. As the Machos comes with a Wilcox style dovetail, I'm using Wilcox L4 G24 arm. This is a real one, as I sometimes test some very expensive night vision, but there are some good CNC aluminium airsoft clones available. You can adjust the height, angle, and length to suit your eyes. The arm mounts onto the shroud on the helmet. Some airsoft helmets have integrally molded shrouds. I would really avoid those and get one that comes with a separate replaceable mount that you can swap out if needed. On the back of the helmet, I have this counterweight pouch. When I'm running the Sarnix or a GoPro, I use this to store a power bank to help with the runtime. This connects with a USB cable run underneath my helmet cover right up to the unit. If you're going to be playing in really dark areas, you might also want to consider mounting an IR illuminator onto your helmet like this one. The Sarnix, like all light Amplification devices need some ambient or artificial light to operate. Sometimes there just won't be enough light around and you'll need to provide that yourself. IR light is invisible to the naked eye that will show up like a torch to other night vision users. Okay, so we have all the hardware. How do we set the unit up itself? First, I'd like to thank the members of the Airsoft Sonics users group on Facebook for testing these settings and providing them. You need to set the unit itself to night mode. Sounds obvious, but people do forget. You do this by moving the ring on the front of the camera. Then turn the unit on and zoom in three times. You do this by pressing the left navigation button three times. When I say left, I mean left as it is when it's mounted upside down. This sets the image and displays it approximately one to one scale. It will reset every time you turn the unit off. So you will need to do this every time you want to use the Sarnix as a night vision device. Turn the dial to the settings mode. To navigate the menus, you can use the up and down buttons and make changes to it using the side buttons and then moving up and down through the options. To confirm, 
press the center button. Once you're in the settings menu, turn Wi-Fi off, turn GPS on if you have it, this sport does not. Set auto power to off, set chimes to off. Turn the audio to medium. Next, turn the dial to video mode. Click the center navigation button. EIS off. This is electronic image stabilization and is a major cause of lag if left on. Change the frame rate to 30 FPS or 24 FPS if it's really dark. Running a lower frame rate will help lighten up the image, but it is a compromise with how jerky the image will appear. You may see some motion blur. For best performance, set the resolution to 360p. You might want to leave it at 720p if you're filming all the sources of ambient or artificial light. Turn HDR off. Come back out of the menu by clicking the center button again. Then press and hold the center button until the hidden menu appears. Once you're in that menu, set your brightness to auto, set your overlay to all off, set your EVA timeout to never, set your night glow to color or grayscale if it gets really dark, set quick review to off, and set invert image to on. To change how much amplification is done to the image, you can use the up and down buttons. I do tend to leave this on zero, but you can find out what works for yourself. These settings all will help reduce lag and gets the maximum sensitivity out of the sensor. If you are going to run a power bank, get the unit powered up before you connect the cable and then power up the external power bank. Then there's one last thing we need to do with our Sonyx Aurora before we use it. There are a couple of little external LED lights which indicate when it's recording and what function you're in. You need to cover those up with a small piece of tape for this, I'm using this green duct tape, which doesn't let the light show through. Once that's done, we're ready to go. Finally, we need to talk about accessories to mount on your airsoft gun itself. This is my TM Mark 18 Mod 1 set up for night fighting. It can be hard to aim under night vision, so most people will use an IR laser unit. This projects a laser invisible to the naked eye. You can zero this to your point of impact at your preferred range. It will also be useful to mount a flood IR illuminator to your gun like this Surefire. Some IR designators will also have a built-in illuminator like this GMP D-Ball 2. Though these are usually more focused. It's worth realizing that your IR lasers and illuminators will also be visible to other night vision users. If you want to be more passive, then you can use a red dot that can be turned down low enough to be seen through night vision and not wash it out. It can be difficult to get low enough behind your red dot when using a Sionics or any other night vision tube. A solution to this can be to mount it on a riser like this one from Unity Tactical, giving you a bit more head clearance. My other major recommendations would be to carry spare batteries for everything and practice changing them in the dark. I hope this guide to using the Sionics for Airsoft has been helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. You could also consider joining our Patreon scheme to keep us as independent as possible. If you can't commit to that, then maybe you can pick yourself up a t-shirt from our store. There's a link to both in the description below. I've been Tom Anvil Hibbard for Anvil Airsoft TV. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.